Welcome to Steve's Build Life. Today we're going to install this wood stove that's clearly already installed in my little cabin. So this is a tent stove and I just bought this on Amazon. I think it will work fine. It's not cast iron. It doesn't have soapstone around it. It's small. It's low to the ground. But the little cabin that we're putting it in here is about 100 square foot. So I think it'll work out well. I already set it up outside and I had a fire in it. It's not cast iron. It's not painted black. So I don't know if it's necessary. But there's a lot of oils and things they use for release uh, when they're bending these things and stamping them at the factory. It didn't seem like a bad idea uh, to give it a test run outside where I can just bail on it if need be. So let's go get this installed in the shed. Oh snap. Perfect. So I got this big drill. You could use a sawzall, chainsaw, bite a hole out, whatever. This has got a clutch in it. This is a big hole saw. I'd not recommend hooking this to a regular drill. Some big right angle that you can hang on to. Let's see how she goes, folks. Break my wrist and my face. Here we go. So this uh, whole project kind of reminds me of uh, when I was like 18 or 19, right out of high school, I worked for a guy guiding these wilderness trips. And so we would do dog sled trips in Northern Ontario. One of the trips we went on was with a reporter from the Air Canada magazine. Uh, the guy we worked for ran a fur trapping line. And so we would kind of dog sled from stop to stop along his trapping line. He'd trek his, trek his chaps check his traps. That was kind of what he did for a trip. He kind of double dipped. So uh, we helped him on some of the bigger groups and we would stay in a cabin similar to this. Wood stove in it, dry your clothes out, warm up. But on some of them, we were in a canvas tent that had a tent stove similar to these. And when you put them on the floor, these tents had canvas floor as well. Uh, there was a void in the bottom of uh, the tent that the stove sat on. And so if you were one of the guys sleeping close to the stove, you were toasty warm and you could roll over in the middle of the night and take a leak underneath the stove. But the rule was, if you hit the stove, then you had to be the first one to relight the fire in the morning. If no one hit the stove, the first guy to have to get out of their sleeping bag in that cold weather and go outside and take a leak would have to not only light the stove, but cook breakfast. So you'd have a whole bunch of guys with yellow eyeballs in there just trying to pinch it off long enough that they weren't the first one to have to cook breakfast. So this is another Amazon purchase. I thought it was like a solid deal, but it's not. It's a fireproof mat. It's a little bigger than I anticipated, but no one ever complained it was too big. Okay, come in. No. Uh, got it. Push. Okay, good. What are you laughing about behind the camera? 
Gavin thinks my little tea kettle is hilarious. Adorable little lid. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even keep it together. Come on. That's going to make the best coffee you've ever tasted. So hey, we're building this little micro cabin here as kind of an experiment for our property in Kentucky. Some techniques, size, things like that, heating options, and how that'll work. But we've already got two cabins done. Most of you have probably seen some of the videos on those cabins. If not, uh, we'll put some of the links up here in the description. But you can rent these cabins and we'd love to have you there. So go to the link to our Airbnb listing in the description below. And we'll see you there. So I got this little uh, kindling cracker. They work pretty good. This one's kind of cool. It comes with an assortment of handles, or at least two different ones. A lot of threads. But you can put a little longer one on here so you get more leverage. These little stoves don't take a lot of really big wood because they're not very big. Gavin had the idea to mount this inside instead of outside. Then you're in the warm splitting your wood and opening the door less. But it also doesn't sit out in the rain and make a problem. Let's try it out. I never used one before. I've seen other guys do it. Todd, I've seen the one that Evan made. I don't know. It doesn't take very much. Pretty cool. Works pretty good. All right, so we're pretty close on the install, if you will. And I think uh, we don't have enough time today before it gets dark to get this lit. And I'm gonna get like, this kind of stinks here, this big thimble. They call this a three inch and they call this a three inch, but they're different like a triple wall, single wall. This is really two, I don't know, but I'm gonna get some rocks wool to stuff around it. It's like fireproof insulation to keep the drafts from coming in. It won't affect it. I was gonna get another piece of metal, but then we found this old stop sign in the shop. I think it'll work fine. Uh, I was using that in the trailer, um, but we'll get that stuff get situated i got a couple more things to hang up and then we're going to test this out and see how warm we can get it in here this stuff is nasty gavin says it tastes worse than it feels it's not right that'll do for now all right we're going to light a little fire in here got kind of an assortment of different firewoods one that light easy there's the holes we cut out for the chimney you know, regular size firewood. Boy, you might fit a 16 inch log in there, but I got a whole bunch of them and cut them in half. Good kiln dried stuff. We'll get it started with the small stuff here and then we'll put some uh, bigger stuff in there. Some overnighters, get her up to temp. Should be good. I think smoke's out the front here pretty bad. Push my fire back further. You know, back to these dog sled trips that we used to guide. When uh, I worked for that guy, he would say, you kids need to learn how to light a fire properly. And he'd say, so you get one match. And if you don't get it lit, we're sitting in the cold. Well, it's minus 100 out. That's incentive to get it right. We always made it with one match, but I was always curious if he would really hold himself to sleeping in minus 100 degrees because I couldn't get the fire lit with one match. Let's see. Currently, it says 36 degrees in here. It's a, it's a balmy day. Oh, look at that. Fan's already going. The front of that stove is 45 degrees, but the top's 70. All right, well, let's uh, let this percolate for a little while. I think we're going to go out and split some firewood while we warm this shed up. We're going to close the door and see how hot we can get it in here. I got my little Sasquatch. We're going to put him up there and warm it up. We'll get some water in there and make a cup of coffee later, too. So years ago, I had this uh, farmhouse. I had this old cast iron wood stove in my wood shop. So that's the only source of heat there. I had like a iguana heater mat that I used to keep in an insulated cabinet, keep the paint and glue and stuff on there and the rest of it wasn't heated. So I had a friend give me a whole bunch of these boxes that had wooden chair parts in them. 
So it was the rungs and the legs and the seats and the back and all the, you know, rungs in the back. And so I would just take the parts. They were still packaged leftovers from somewhere he worked. And I would just burn those. And I got a big fire going in there. It wound up getting so hot from that kiln dried hardwood. I wound up, the, the entire cast iron stove was glowing. The building was concrete about halfway up, so I wasn't worried about that. I wound up having to crawl in the attic and pull the insulation back from the pipe because it's about to burn the barn down. So moral of the story, even if you've got a less efficient stove, you can still get that sucker really hot. And uh, that's when I found this uh, Roxel, I kept wanting to call it rock wool insulation. It can take the heat. So uh, we switched to that, but uh, pro tip, don't burn your shop down. Not even using any wood yet. She's a little smoky. It stoves 425 degrees. She's getting her done. All right, how are we looking? All right, well, we got the fire going. We got our water brewing here. We went to lunch, oh yeah, 316 degrees now. And this had dropped down a lot. We had the door shut a little bit. Heat in this place, you gotta run this thing wide open. And when you open the door, I had this trouble in my trailer too when I was trying to use it to heat up my camper. Uh, just the smoke just comes barreling out. So I'm not 100% that uh, <laughs> this is the right move for here. And if you put a little cast iron stove in, it might be uh, too strong, but I got some ideas, uh, too hot in here. I got some ideas for some fire brick and things we're gonna put in there, but uh, this works pretty good. I mean, this little shed, it's not insulated at all. And uh, we realized there's no way to pull the door shut without a handle. So Gavin fashioned a ratchet strap parts handle on there. He's no longer in charge of interior decorating, but it works pretty good to close the door. So I'm gonna make me a cup of coffee and enjoy my time out here thinking about my life decisions. Where to put the filters? Nothing. Oh no. So, <laughs> look in the bottom of that coffee filter. It broke a hole and all the coffee fell into the carafe but I got a backup plan. This is actually a tea kettle. Perfect fit. Look at that. Jay, this is the best mug I've ever used in my life. It's the perfect size. So if you guys need this, go to Homestead Jay's channel. Link in the description, buy his merch, because surely this coffee mug is exceptional over all others. Oh, it makes really good coffee too. That's great. All right, well, this thing is finally cooking and it is hot. Uh, I have no doubt that this is plenty to heat this shed. I'm going to sit here and enjoy my coffee. Special thanks to Homestead J. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. But for right now, you got to go because you are letting all of the heat out. Get on with you. It's not hot enough. <laughs> no one will ever know. <laughs>